in furtherance of its efforts to deepen Nigeria's domestic gas utilization and enhance gas exports, the NNPC Limited has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Norwegian company Golar LNG to build a floating liquefied natural gas plant in Nigeria. Group CEO NNPC Limited, Malam uh, Melekiari, and CEO of Golar Limited, Mr. Carl Frederick uh, Stobo, signed the agreement on behalf of their respective companies during a brief ceremony held at the NNPC Towers in Abuja on Wednesday. Golar LNG is one of the world's largest independent owners and operators of marine-based LNG midstream infrastructure that is active in the liquefaction, transportation, and regasification of natural gas. Uh, Mr. Imano Obeche, who is a public affairs analyst and chair of the Nigerian Union of Journalists in FCT, joins us to talk oil and gas. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Rutus. Nice right to have you. What do you make of the, uh, the MOU that's been signed? Well, um, MOUs are good, and especially when you're signing with um, renowned global energy firm. You know, Gola has been in the business for 75 years. 25, 20 of those years have been in LNG. And um, we've been talking about foreign direct investment. And this is just one example which the NNPC Limited is demonstrating. And you know that we've been talking about that um, this is the decade of gas in Nigeria. And there is no better time to demonstrate this than to have um, a viable partner that can help in streamlining the gas um, development. Mm. And we're talking about domestication of um, the gas resources in our country so that we can have uh, more of domestic gas and even export. And um, over the years, we've seen that um, the various LNG trains have really boosted um, uh, our resources in terms of revenue and having um, GOLA you know, a Norwegian company. And uh, we know that Norway is the third largest, um, about the largest now since the Ukrainian war started, um, gas export in Europe, exporter in Europe. So it's um, a good thing. We hope that the NNPC can actually leverage on what it has started and ensure that the domestic gas market, you know, is, has a boost and we can see price reduction. Mm. Fantastic. I want to pivot to the upstream uh, regulatory uh, petroleum uh, commission, the, the, the regulator, the NUPRC. Um, can you talk about its importance with what, how it's been empowered, I guess, by the, uh, with the PIA? Well, um, it's been a transition right from when it was a department. And um, in 2021, when the PIA came into force, uh, we've seen quite um, remarkable um, strides and achievements. It has been more empowered. It's not a commission and um, has full range, um, full range in pass, you know, to deliver on its mandate to be the core regulator, uh, you know, and offer technical directives and expertise, you know, in the upstream sector of the economy. And um, we think if you look at what um, the commission has been able to achieve under engineer Komolafe, mm. then you will know that um, it's a good thing and now we can really harness the upstream um, resources which is available in abundance in our country and before now you know as a department they were hamstrung by certain um, bureaucratic bottlenecks mm. and most of those um, bottlenecks have been removed now you have no excuse not to deliver on the mandate which has been given to you courtesy of the PIA 2021. Fantastic. Can we talk about what the, the measures taken to attract foreign investment? Well, uh, you know, over time, the idea that um, foreign investment is key to the development of oil and gas in Nigeria has been at the front burner. And for you to achieve this mandate, first of all, you must understand what are your core functions, what are the core duties, you know, as a commission, as a regulator. And um, I think gaining, giving clarity, you know, to investors is very key. And I think the first thing the AUPRC did was to embark on roadshows. And those roadshows were to show the enormous potential that exists within the oil and gas sector, especially the upstream sector, which um, the commission is wholly responsible for. And um, those um, roadshows, you know, took them to US, UK, Egypt, to get more investors, you know, and um, living in a world where technology 
is um, the key thing, and especially after COVID-19, a lot of um, webinars were held, you know, to show the potential and harness uh, the resources. And that saw investors, you know, showing up. There were roadshows. There were other incentives that were granted to investors. And uh, we've seen quite a number of investments coming in. And we think that a lot still needs to be done, actually. And uh, we, if you look at what they have been able to do in terms of ensuring that there is sanity within the system and boosting investors' confidence, then you know that we're on track mm. on delivering on the mandate of, um, the, of the commission yeah. as a regulator. The, the, the major thing, I think, is yeah. the gas flare commercialization program. Uh -huh. You know, because gas is the key. As at present, Nigeria flays about 10% of its gas, which isn't good enough. Well, there is a potential for you to harness this gas to boost unemployment, to boost um, revenue. So the market is wide. And since then, um, I think about, there have been several bids, about 49 um, bids, you know, that have been processed and granted to companies to invest in, in the gas flaring sector so as to reduce hydrocarbon emissions. And Nigeria was the key, I guess you were in Glasgow in 2021, That's right. on COP21, and um, Nigeria was um, a key player, mm. and we have commitments to make. And so when you open the gas sector through the gas commercialization program, you know, you have a turnover of investments, whether local and international, leading to 49. That means when more investors come in, you're going to make more revenue, you're going to create jobs, you're going to have an environment, uh, if, if a gas-friendly environment, mm. and it is very key. By 2060, Nigeria has a commitment of zero net emission. So all of this adding up together, mm. It's very instructive in what we're doing. What about the measures to increase oil production? Okay, there, well, there are quite a number of measures. Mm. Um, the commission has the fuel development plants. They have had um, marginal bids, uh, bid, um, marginal field bids, you know, and we know that by before this month runs out, April, yeah. about seven deep offshore wells are up for bid. Mm. That's going to see about $500 million coming in. That's on signature bonuses alone. Yes. We're not talking about royalties and taxes that are going to be paid up. You know, there are well intervention programs that um, the commission has uh, put in. Um, at the last count, I think, they had identified about 2,433 shot in oil wells. Yeah. You know, because of theft, vandalism, pipeline vandalism, and other technical reasons. They are working to ensure that all of these um, wells that were shot in are reactivated. Uh, they are also produ um, producing strings that were also shot in. And they are working with technical partners and investors to ensure that those oil wells and strings come on board. What that simply means is that when all of this come on board, in the short term, hopefully 50,000 barrels of oil per day will be produced, adding to the oil stock. If you look from last year to last year, yes, to the first quarter of this year, where you had, no, I think it started from 2022, where we had just about a billion barrels per day. Yeah. And before the last quarter of last year, first quarter of last year, mm -hmm. we saw it rising to 1.6 million barrels per day. Mm -hmm. And the expectation is that when all of these interventions are concluded, we should be looking at 1.9 or up to 2 million barrels per day. Then there are other measures like the drill and drop, mm -hmm. where if your you're not executing your OPL, yeah. you know, uh, oil prospecting um, license, yeah. it will simply be returned 
into the basket for other investors to take advantage. Those ones with competence, not just, and it doesn't matter if, even if they are not um, international. Yeah. You could also have um, local investors with the capacity mm -hmm. to, to to get into the system as well. Great stuff. We'll have to get you back to talk a lot more. So much more going on in the oil and gas industry. Mr. Emmanuel Obeche, Public Affairs Analyst, Chair of the Nigerian Union of Journalists in uh, FCT. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate Thank it. You.